finally had some luck, everybody. There is an ant lion. Can you believe it? Now, this is what we call the larval form. So it's a larva. You know how a caterpillar becomes a moth or a, cat or a butterfly? Well, this thing becomes something that looks like a dragonfly. And eventually, so this is a young one. And often, the thing that it becomes, the ant lion that it becomes, actually never feeds. It never eats anything. But as a larva, or a youngster like this, it feeds all the time. And it uses those rather vicious pincers, you can see at the front there, to catch ants. Isn't that amazing? Hayden, Caden, you're wondering why they call it an ant lion. They call it an ant lion, Caden, because it eats ants and it catches them. Now what I'm going to try and do is put it into a little observing pen and then we're going to try and put it under the microscope. Oh, sorry. I'm very excited. My first piece of luck today. Look at that. See that? Now he's upside down. And I think he'd actually look much better on black background. Sorry, Curse, come back a sec. So let's put him on a black background. That's much better. And we'll just do this a bit. Isn't he cool? So there you can see his vicious little biting mouth parts. And you can see he's got six legs, so he's an insect, that's how we know that. And he walks backwards. Always walks backwards because that's how he digs. So he digs backwards into his little burrow, and he uses those back legs to dig himself into his burrow. I think this is a rather fantastic sighting of an ant lion. Let's see how close down we can get to him before he moves. He's absolutely fine. He's just playing dead. Lots of animals like this will play dead if they think they've been spotted. Put the thing right on top of him, and then I know that's not a great picture. There we go. We'll just put some light on quickly. There. Isn't that amazing? Oh, he's starting to wake up again. And look at his beard. He's got a little beard. And now you can see his vicious, vicious teeth there. You see that? Look at those sores on the front of his, what they'd call them pedipalps, I guess, modified pedipalps. So those big pincers on the front of his face, on his jaws. And imagine being an ant and grabbed by that. You wouldn't have a chance, would you? So what we will do eventually is just return him to the soil, where, like I say, in about 10 seconds he'll make himself another home. But they do like to pretend to be dead, because it tends to put predators off sometimes. Now, Raina, you're obviously quite a clever, uh, clever person. You say, <laughs> you say, are or do animals come out according to the seasons? Absolutely, they do. Uh, these animals will come down. Whoops! These animals will come out mainly during the summer months. There he is. That's the top of him. They'll come out mainly during the summer, and we're just going out of the summer now. So there'll be a few of them left, and some of them will survive throughout the winter. But when it gets cold, it's difficult for an insect. So most of the insects and the reptiles and that sort of thing will only be out in the summertime. And we're going into winter now, so much of these, or these very special sightings of these animals are going to become much, much less frequent. And the bigger animals then will start to concentrate around the water. You saw those elephants. We'll find buffalo and that sort of thing also around all the water holes as the water gets less and less during the dry season. Because winter for us is our dry season. See, I was trying to dig with this bottom there. Now, Malia, you're wondering how long it takes an antlion pupa to turn into an adult. I don't know how long the pupa takes, but I know that this process, so from larval stage up until adult stage, takes a year. So it takes roughly a full year for this chap to eat enough ants to become big enough to turn into an antlion. You see how he's trying to dig there with his bottom? Can't figure out quite why it's so difficult here in this plastic. And all those hairs around him will help him to be able to get into the soil. 
And Elizabeth, as I was just saying there, you say, why are they hairy? Well, Elizabeth, it's because we think um, that those hairs help him to push the soil out of the way, to push the sand out of the way when he goes under the ground. Isn't that cool? I think that's just the most wonderful shot. OK, I'll tell you what we'll try and do now. We'll try something quite special. Let's see if we can't watch him dig. Um, let's put him over there. And then what we'll do is we'll take the sand that he was in. That's the sand here on this piece of paper. OK, and we'll put it in the other half of our viewing device. There we go. Okay, we'll put that there. Not to make too much mess. Now for me not to make a mess is very unusual. And now we're going to put this chap in here. And I'm going to quickly try and get the microscope onto him and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it fast enough before he gets digs himself under the ground. Boom. Right, there we go. Dig. Ah, cool. Now let's see. Watch, watch. Come on, dig. <laughs> there you can see him digging. Look, there he goes. There he goes. Go on, under you go. I thought they were a bit faster than that. There he goes. And he's gone. And that's where he'll wait for an ant to come past. How amazing was that? I think this might be the best ant lion sighting I've ever had after such a poor start. Cool, so that's where he's going to hide. And I'll put him back outside right now. You can see outside, it's got quite dark. Ooh.